self-driving cars, data compression, turning a grayscale image into a colored image? What machine learning algorithm could possibly do so many amazing things? Let's talk about it. An autoencoder is such a unique algorithm, but we need to understand how it works before we're able to implement one. So we can describe an autoencoder in three main parts. We start with the encoder. So let's say, for example, uh, we had some kind of image that we wanted to take, compress, flatten it so it's smaller in size, and then reconstruct it in a different location. So we have this image and we feed it to the autoencoder. And the first step of the autoencoder is the encoder. And what this does is it takes an image that's for, for example, 28 by 28 pixels and compresses it to a seven by seven by 64 dimension. Now you might be asking, why is this useful? When we have the ability to take a video or an image or any type of data, compress it and then reconstruct it in a different location, it tells us what the most important features of this video image or data are. So you can reconstruct it in any location. So it allows people to have access to all this data, but in a smaller package. And that's so important in data science, taking huge amounts of data and understanding what are the key features of those data of, of that data, and then replicating it at a larger scale. So that's the main capability of an autoencoder. The next step is for the encoder to take that and compress it after it compresses it. The data goes into something that's called a latent space. And the latent space is where this small amount of data lives. So an autoencoder put simply is just a neural network that uses backpropagation to be able to take data that might be way too large to process, condense it, and it will be, and the autoencoder will be able to reconstruct that data in a different location. And that's super useful. What other algorithm could do such a thing? In oh my God! Wow! Oh my God! Coders are amazing, but it's a little hard to understand how they work. So let me break it down. We start with the encoder, which actually takes our data and extracts key features from the data. So let's say you had this amazing 28 by 28 image of a lion, but it's way too large to send to me. I can't receive it. You took it on your best high quality camera. So what you're going to do is we're going to compress the size of the image and extract key features so that another neural network will be able to reconstruct the image in a different location. So the encoder is simply reducing the size of the image and it's able to understand what are the key, extract the key features of the image. Then we have our latent space and our code. And that's where the compressed data lives until it's transferred to our next part of the autoencoder. So let's say we want to reconstruct it. All right. So now we have a decoder, which is basically the polar opposite of the encoder, because it's going to take the key extract, uh, extracted features. And it's going to say, okay, these are the features. Can I reconstruct the image here? And it's amazing the results that we see. So let's dive into an example. So there are a lot of features on hyperparameters that we might be able to consider here with an autoencoder. But the most important ones are the following. First, the code size, or basically the size of the bottleneck. So we can see from a diagram here, based on the size of the latent space, that's going to tell us how much we're compressing and a larger code size um, will allow us to compress more data. The next is the amount of layers we have. The amount of layers we have will allow the autoencoder to reduce noise, but that's not always necessarily the case. It also comes down to how many nodes we have in the neural network. And we can ba basically sandwich these layers and nodes 
to make the model more accurate, but there are configurations that will mess with the model that we don't really want to touch. So we've learned that the autoencoder has a very certain structure and we know how it works. So what does the code look like? First, we'll import the following libraries, including tensorflow.keras, numpy, and matplotlib using the manist dataset. Next, we use the following format to import manist by loading the data. We'll define our input shape as a 28 by 28 pixel by 1 input, defining the input size and making sure that the train, the training model is receiving the right type of input and the right format of pixel inputs. Then we'll define key variables like the batch size, the kernel size, and the latent dimension size. After that, we'll define the amount of CNN layers and filters per layer using the following definition. Now, we use the following for statement to define the shape info needed to build a decoder model so we don't have to do a hand computation. The input to the decoders is the first priority that we're trying to address and the convolutional 2D transpose will also have this shape as well as the encoder shape as the encoder and decoder shape are identical. We'll flatten the latent vector like so and we'll define our encoder model as such. We're assigning the encoder and decoder to PNG files so we can see what they actually look like. Now we define the compressed form of the image using a 7 by 7 by 64 shaped image. Then we use a reshape function to turn that image back into our 28 by 28 by 1 pixel value image. We now define the convolutional transpose model and the decoder model as so, and then we combined our decoder and encoder models as such and summarize it like so. Now we compile them with a mean squared error loss and an atom optimizer, fit the model to our training data, and then we're able to see what the output is using the following statements and plot our output as such. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Peace.